Next on the list, we've got this flipping mad story about this lady called Jessica Krug, who essentially um, tricked everyone at her university into believing that she was a black woman. And considering the picture that we're looking at at the moment, I don't know how she managed that, but God damn it, what a funny LOL story. This might be a clear indication of the dangers and the perils of uh, obsessing over race, these perils of um, identity, or the, yeah, the, the unintended consequences of identity politics, right? It might be. That is because on one end, if you're going to go around telling people that the most important thing about them is their identity, right? The most important thing is how they identify, is how the world sees them. It's not the, you know, the content of their character, what they do for their community is about their own racial identity. And if you put that as the most important thing in somebody, um, if you kind of frame your, you know, ec equal, what's the thing? Equilibrium, not equilibrium. What's that thing? If you form your, blah, 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 my mind's going blank. If you form your <laughs> syllabus around that and you hire people based on their race and you put you make that basically the most important thing it, ha it, it there's no it shouldn't be surprising when somebody tries to take advantage of that and tries to basically use it takes advantage of it in order to kind of further their career because they're worried because they're a white woman that essentially they're going to be behind uh they're going to be at the back of the line because we're living in a moment now where if you're loud enough and your skin color happens to be dark enough you can effectively shame yourself into a career it's not honorable it's not the most um uh ethical thing to do um you probably wouldn't be able to sleep at night knowing that you cheated your way into a position or maybe you would i don't know but this is definitely the time where if you make up enough of a fuss about a lineup about an appointment about a uh, boardroom whatever it may be you can definitely wangle your way in as a diversity hire which is quite possibly one of the worst one of my biggest nightmares right it's advantageous in some regards because it allows you to maybe skip a couple of steps but knowing full well that you're only at a company because of your economic or societal background or your race is i don't know man for me it just seems a bit demeaning i would rather not get the position based on my race or get the position based on the content of my work than get it primarily because i happen to be black that'll be my nightmare but i thought this was flipping hilarious because this woman doesn't look closest she she maybe she might look hispanic right if you told me she's hispanic fair enough but to tell, to tell me she's black is insane if this woman is for instance, Cardi B doesn't identify as black, right? She identifies as Latina or Hispanic, whatever, right? Cardi B is more looks more black than this woman, essentially, right? It's essentially it's just insane. This doesn't make any sense. But anyway, Professor Investigator for posing as black has resigned. Uh, as black has resigned, the university says. Um, it continues here. It says a George George University univer a George University sorry a George Washington University professor who was being investigated after a blog post published under her name said that she misrepresented herself as a black woman has resigned. The university said on Wednesday. The resignation of the professor Jessica A. Crew came after the university said it was looking into an essay on Medium posted under her name in which the writer described a prolonged deception of assuming black identities even though she's white. And this is a medium post here. It says the truth and the anti-black violence of my lies. This is insane. Look, I starts for the better of my adult life, better part of my adult life. Every move I've made, every relationship I've formed has been rooted in in, in the napalm, toxic soils of lies. Calm down, woman. Not just any lies. To an escalating degree, over my adult life, I I I have eschewed my lived experience as a white Jewish child in suburban Kansas under various assumed identities within a blackness that I had no right to claim. First, Afri first North African blackness, then U.S. rooted blackness, then Caribbean rooted Bronx. But I didn't even know that was a thing. So she went through three phases of black. She pretended to be Moroccan, Egyptian. Then she pretended to be what some girl from Alabama or something. You're at right? some um, southern state somewhere, and then she pretended to be Caribbean. Mamma mia. This woman's mad. Well, like Puerto Rico or something. Puerto Rican. I don't know. Um, I've not only claimed these identities of my own. When I'd absolutely no right to do so, when doing so is a very epitome of violence, of thievery, and of appropriation of a myriad of ways in which non-black people continue to use and abuse black identities and cultures. But I have formed instant, um, intimate relationship with loving, compassionate people who have trusted and cared for me when I have deserved neither trust nor caring. People have fought together with me, have fought for me, and my continued uh, appropriation of black Caribbean identity is not only in the starkest term wrong, unethical, immoral, anti-black, and colonial, but it means that every step I've taken has gaslit those who are in love. Those who are loved at Jesus Christ says the intention was never never matters more than the impact. Yes, fair enough, good enough quote, but 
for me i don't know like um as a black guy i don't really care about this stuff i really don't um i think if anything this just goes to show how stupid some of these um what you, some of these policies are where you tend to kind of readdress the balance uh by hiring people based on their skin color this these are the unintended effects of it i think if anything we're in silly time now and we just need to do away with this and kind of realize that there are some issues in some institutions where there is a need for diversity but it doesn't come in it doesn't the way the way to address it isn't just to go and hire some black people the way to address it is to maybe get to the root cause as to why some people of a of a certain ethnic background are not basically predisposed to go to a certain area maybe it's an education thing maybe it's access whatever it may be address the actual core issue instead of just kind of plopping in people based on their color because effectively there's going to be some white people within that hiring process or within that institution that are going to be looking at it thinking hey what about me and then that's when they're going to go get in front of the mirror get out some shoe polish and essentially right go out there and pretend they're from angola or something like this is absolutely nuts but again, I just think it's a consequence of what's happening in general in society. And then this lady came out of the blue and basically threw this woman under the bus again and said, oh, I knew her personally and she's always been a bitch to me. So this woman called um, Yerima, was it? Yerima, Yerima Bonilla says the following. Um, Many are asking themselves how Jessica Krug managed to fool anyone into believing she was Afro-Latina. Well, let me tell you, we were both fellows at the, um, what's that, Schromberg, and I suppose she fooled me, a Fred. I mean, I don't hurt or betrayed. I mean, I don't feel hurt or betrayed in this moment because the truth is I always knew something was off about her. But I thought the pathologic, the pathology she displays were the product of systemic violence and not of her twisted racial fantasies. <laughs> See, not only did she try to pass, we need a better term for that here. That passive thing is odd too, isn't it, right? Do you pass a certain race here and there? That's a very odd, odd term. But hey, um, as a Tina from el barrio but she also told us her parents were addicts and even said that they were overdosed and suicide attempts happening during the fellowship period <laughs> it's bad enough if you kind of go out there pretending bad i don't know i'm rolling my eyes like um ocasia cortez it's bad enough if you're pretending to be black right but don't get your family and friends involved like let, leave them out of this right don't invent these myths and these lies about your parents being crackhead so it can justify your likeness or your desire to you know cover yourself in shoe polish that isn't a vibe like you you've got something wrong in your head of course she's mentally disturbed don't get me wrong there's definitely some mental health issues going on there but this is just lows mate lows she's um she always dressed and acted inappropriately she'd show up to a 10 a.m scholars seminar dressed for a salsa class <laughs> imagine in a very kind of uh left-leaning humanitarian based university where everyone's sort of open and accepting of everyone's um fashion and outlook and perspective and blah 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 you 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 definitely want to say something right because there are there is always a time and a place like the lizzo thing when she went to that basketball game with a hole that basically exposed her entire derriere right that wasn't an issue of her just being fat it wasn't like oh we're fat shaming no it was just like that's inappropriate why are you doing that um and uh, of course you know in that moment it felt awkward to say that because you then you definitely felt like you were fat shaming you felt as if like you know you were adding to the chorus of people who say that she shouldn't be living free and wild because she happens to be a little bit rotund so i guess there's a there's that kind of thinking that comes into it where this lady where she rocks up to a meeting in the morning dressed in some spandex you know with some gold hoops on and her boobs pushed up to her face you want to be like uh we're not yeah that isn't the time or the place you don't want to say that because you know you it's just effectively you are got your trying you, you feel like you're maybe putting into question their race or their identity in general right you don't want to be that person it continues here. It says, in that sense, she did gaslight us, not only into thinking she was a woman of color, but also into thinking we were somehow both political and intellectually inferior. She says, while claiming to be a child of addicts from the hood, she boasted about speaking numerous languages, which she didn't speak, right? Imagine doing that. You're back in the day in school when there was that kid in class that always pretended they had all the computer games, but then whenever you'd ask to or try to invite yourself to go around, there was always something that was happening that would never let you go. And then suddenly you definitely came to a realization or something on told you in school like oh that guy's full of shit he always lies isn't it he doesn't have a ps4 an xbox and a nintendo he's got a game boy that's it um that's the same but imagine doing that with languages like just saying you speak spanish but no never speaking spanish what happens then when someone speaks it to you you just say yeah yeah si sí, si sí, claro claro like, what do you say how do you pretend you speak spanish or that you speak italian or french like that's mad bruv um do you think that people exist 
there's some of the people that exist out there that pretend that they 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 pretend like do you think someone exists out there that pretends they speak a language tries to get a job as a translator successfully gets it and then bluffs it the whole way through that is mad isn't it and they they pick up a hefty way through translators so that's no uh that's no uh cheap occupation so yeah um she boasts about speaking numerous languages reading asian texts and mastering disciplinary methods while questioning the work of real women of color doing the transformative inspiring work that she pans so that's some that's sort of gets the the horrible part of the issue not only was she pretending to be black she also was very critical and very confrontational or dismissive of the work of her fellow black professors at the university so you can only imagine how some of them must be feeling now that she's been exposed as a fraud which i think you know for the most part i think she was probably afraid of a story coming out in one of the broadsheets and she wanted to get in front of it which is a, probably a smart thing to do but god almighty man i think a lot of that has to do with her own insecurity she probably felt um guilty and self-conscious and insecure about what she had done so usually it's what happens isn't it? it's like what they say hurt people hurt people so she just went on the, on the offensive and tried to kind of go at it before anyone else got at her it continues to say she consistently trashed women of color questioned their scholarship mama mia how can you question someone's scholarship when you got yours based on an absolute lie she even described by my colleague marissa fuentes as a slave catcher in the instruction of her book kind of amazing how white supremacy means that she even thought she was better at being a person of color than we were which is you know that's a stock one isn't it that's a harsh that's fucking real oh my days was a psycho um that pathology remains evident in her M mia corpo article somehow she manages to remain ultra work and strident still in her political moral high horse calling for white scholars to be cancelled in this instance her own white self which is not not to be su it's not surprising that language that verbiage that goes out there to use the sound work we know what what it is we know what how we know the kind of cadence so she's just using it to advantage I, I think you can only blame yourselves or we can only blame ourselves as a society that we've allowed it to get to a point where if people use certain words in a sentence in a good way, it means an ally they use it in a bad way, suddenly they are a transphobe or, you know, an ist or something, right? That's where we got to. So she basically used that to advantage. She basically used the entire scheme to advantage. She pretended she was black so she could get scholarship, pretended she was black so she could be, get, you know, um, advantages and being a professor that she wouldn't have got maybe she was white because of affirmative action or whatever it may be like she's basically used all these tricks against the very people who they're meant to benefit in some way shape or form um she says she always da, 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 she, she 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 says she doesn't know what accountability looks like well clearly she needs to quit her job since no scholar can be respected when they engage in this kind of fraud um second she needs to start a fellowship fund for afro latina scholars and fund it with at least as much money as she obtained through her lies imagine the amount of money she claimed through the university she was like, oh my god first she needs to stop with the dollars i was explaining about how wrong her actions and philosophizing about her punishment i'm not in investing a single drop in energy in punishing her especially not in the middle of a pandemic instead i will commit recommit to race radical self-community care which i agreed with and then it brings me on to the second one another lady got caught uh, a grad student admits lying about being black now, this is this is definitely a problem in the states isn't it do you, is, do you think that happens in the uk no there is isn't it there's that girl i covered ages ago on a podcast who was black fishing and i think there's a few scandinavian girls that do it most of those scandinavian girls are girls that you know love a bit of rum they're you know they are very yeah they love a bit of rum which aka they love black dudes anyway in general um black dudes seem to like them and they kind of play up the fact that you know they especially if they have a bit of melanin in their skin or if they're a bit olive they sort of purposely tan themselves even more to make them look a certain way which has always been bizarre to me especially when they get called up on it they're always a bit super dismissed this defensive when it's like we know what you're doing like just own it and just keep it moving and it's not a bad thing but this this girl did exactly the same thing i think there's a video of her actually talking in it right uh let's see here it's in the background this kid, this woman here, let's this this woman pretended she was black. She looks nuts. Like, some of these people that pretend they're black, some of them deserve actual. They might actually deserve the scholarships, you know, because if that lady is black, then I don't know, man. But hey, it says a graduate student in the University of Wisconsin has apologized and resigned from their teaching job and workers' union leadership position after years of embracing lies about their racial identity. Um, C. V. Vitolo Haddad, who uses the non-binary pronouns they and them, admitted that they are actually Southern Italian and Sicilian. <laughs> that's basically that's basically um what you call it ariana grande isn't it ariana grande is i only learned this recently ariana, ariana grande is italian she's not latina um she's not south american she's not central american she's from italy 
Like she's like Italy, Italian, Italian. Like do you know what I mean? It's it's a madness. I actually clocked that what the other day. Someone mentioned it in a thing. Let me see. Ariana Grande Latina, and someone had the image of what she actually looks like. Um, vis a vis what she looks like now. And yeah, there's a bit of sand bed involved and probably some tanning and you know whatever it may be. But god damn it, she looks like she tries to pass herself as a Camila Cabello looking woman, but she's not. Right, she's just a, a regular, you know, uh, pretty white lady from uh, Italy. I think here's the image I'm gonna put up now on the screen. It's like God Almighty, look at that style evolution. They say, yeah, look at that on the screen. That's what she's meant to look like, or maybe these two, and then that's what she looks like now at the moment. It's like Jesus, McGee's. I don't know what it is about these people. But hey, um, she says, not black and Latina, which are both labels that sh they accepted when peers... Imagine referring to yourself as... Oh, Jesus Christ. This is so confusing. Okay, cool. Uh, they accepted when peers allegedly assumed they were a person of color. Um, when sh when asked if I identify as black, my answer should have always been no. Vitolo Hadid wrote um, on September the 8th in a second of two confessions on Medium. They were three separate instances I said otherwise. I have let guesses about my industry become answers I wanted uh, but couldn't prove. Vitola had dad previously said in an apology published on 6th on September that I have let people make assumptions when I should have corrected them. I guess this is similar to that guy that lied about being in the, in the, in the Twin Towers when it when it went down. It went, yeah, lied about being in the Towers at 9-11. Um, it started off like that. I think he, because he's a, cause he's a you know, hardcore New Yorker and he happened to work in that area. Someone asked him, hey, were you in the towel? I was like, you know, really concerned, wide-eyed and he just used the opportunity just to say yes because he thought there was no other way to get out of it. And then that person told two other people, they then went and asked him again and he had to just keep the lie up and then it got to a point where he just, the lie got too much and he had to kind of, um, you know, rewrite his wrongs. But by then, you know, he became the 9-11 faker guy, right? And this is the same sort of instance where you're basically, you know, at a house party somewhere, people are, Asking, oh, wait, what's your ethnicity, man? Like, you look, you look like you're mixed. Are you from like Egypt? Da, da, da. And you're like, oh, da, da, no, actually, I'm I'm from Nigeria or something. You're like, excuse me, madness, man. She continues here. She says, um, in a second, in the second missive, uh, Vitolo Haddad added, "I want to apologize for ever taking uh, for ever taking lies about Cuban roots at face value, ever subsequently attaching myself to people's perceptions of me as though it would provide answers where there are none." <laughs> I can imagine all these people are the types where you know somebody missed somebody miss ethnicized them right uh, or misguessed their ethnicity and they just held on to it someone's once you know you know you know the kind of person that you know have you ever seen a person where they get complimented or told they look like a certain celebrity and they just lean into it super hard it's really creepy but same thing happens with, i guess with these kind of racially ambiguous people where you know especially in an era where in the humanities you get rewarded if you are somebody from a marginalized racial group I, it, i'm not surprised they will take advantage of the system i really know of course don't get me wrong it's disgusting it's heinous but the game is the game now at the moment, isn't it? Literally, people are playing up to it. Uh, people are playing up it's the, the trauma they've gone through to get positions. Like It is what it is. If it's getting rewarded, people are going to take advantage of it one way or the other. She says, um, however, in a series of text messages, Vitola had told reporters, I repeated things I had heard growing up from my family that I now know to be lies. Oh, she's blaming. Look, everyone's always doing this, blaming other people, throwing them under the bus. She's doing the, what's it? The Elizabeth Warren thing, right? She's blaming her parents for telling her she was uh, American Indian or whatever it may be, or native it's like jesus christ so i repeat the things i heard growing up from my family that i now know to be lies i'm so sorry i take full responsibility for spreading those lies and i'm deeply sorry um in the initial post vitola had also expressed a desire to make amends for every ounce of heartbreak and betrayal and deception cause others like that woman isn't why would she even like it's just like what's the point isn't it is there no advantage in the humanities to being what what is she Italian, Cuban, whatever she Italian. Is there no advantage of that either? Can't you just pretend to be? Because you pretend to be from Nicaragua. No one would bat an eyelid, right? Why the black thing? Like black must be such a high currency in humanities that it just you just have to risk it. Due to controversy, the graduate student who studies in the School of Journalism and Mass Communication has given up the teaching position and stepped down as co-president of the school's chapter on teaching assignments assistant association (TAA). Jesus Christ, she had a custody job, a graduate student union. However, Vitola Haddad has also claimed that they have never identified as non-white on paper or attempted to gain access to scholarships and awards provided. Uh, Vitola Haddad 
Haddad, sorry, admission comes less than two weeks after African histories and Western George Washington University professor Jessica Crew, blah, 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 blah. Like, that is insane, isn't it? Imagine living in a place where you're rewarded for your race in this way, right? To, to some advantage, especially if you come from a, you know, a, a bit of a bad background. And then there's people taking advantage of it, such as this lady, in order to kind of bolster their career. And they're fully white. Like, not even like mixed, oh, yeah, I'm just, no, fully, fully white. It's like so, so odd. Like one of the oddest things I've ever seen in my life, man. Like, uh, I, I don't understand. 